The issue with power banks is you have all that power with you, but without a cable, it's just a heavy paperweight. What you need is a way to never have to worry about bringing an extra peripheral with you to charge your devices on the go. Worry not, the Anchor Nano 35 watt power bank has you covered with portability and convenience and a built-in cable. I'm Wanderer 001, let's get into it. Anchor has been introducing a line of what they're describing as nano devices, packing a lot of power and tech into small form devices. As you heard me mention, one of the great things about a power bank is having power on the go, but that power is locked if you don't have a cable. Well, this nano series, 30 watt power bank has a cable permanently built right in and it is a USB-C cable. Most of your devices nowadays are USB-C. This battery bank is four inches long, has a width of two inches, depth of one inch. It weighs only 7.58 ounces or 215 grams for those who like that type of measurement. It is ridiculously small. The device itself is this matte plastic all around. You do have a little bit of grooving on either side to help make it easier to grab onto. You did notice on the one side, you have two extra ports. You have a USB-A and a USB-C. The USB-C has an interesting trick that it's an in-out port. We'll talk about that a little later. On the top of the device, we have our cable. The cable, like I said, is built right in. It's flat and very flexible. And if we kind of roll that back, it actually acts as a natural hanging spot. So you can kind of grab this and go. Since it's not a MagSafe, it won't attach to the back of your phone, but you could just kind of loop your finger through it like that and you'll be okay. On the top, there is a button to turn on the front screen display here. The display on the front here will show you Right now it's showing the percent of battery that's left. But if I start plugging in things, you'll see right here, it shows the estimated time that this can run based on the power draw of the device I have plugged into it. So based on the phone I have, I can keep this plugged in for two hours and 50 minutes. Now the phone won't take that full length to charge, but it gives you a rough estimate. This will also work when you're charging the device, letting you know an estimate of how long it will be before the battery is charged. The battery itself is a 10,000 milliamp battery and can take roughly an hour and a half to charge depending on how you charge it. Like I said, this cable on the top not only will charge a device that's plugged into it, it will also charge your battery pack. So you, again, need zero extra cables when utilizing this device. Now you can charge multiple devices plugged into this, but that will start diminishing the returns that you get from this. Based on what you're charging with this is how far that 10,000 milliamps is gonna get you. I found with my Pixel 8 when it was rapid charging, it pulls more power more quickly. I could get about 1.5 charges out of this power bank. Think of this more as an emergency. I'm out in the town and I wanna charge something back up to make sure that I make it through the night, as opposed to this is something that I'm gonna be able to to charge my devices multiple times with it. Coming over to our actual ports right here, you can see both of them are IQ ports, meaning that the ports themselves will not output any more than the device that you have plugged into it can handle. That is a very useful thing because you don't wanna worry about damaging the device you have plugged into this. If you are utilizing one port, you can get a maximum of 30 watts out or 30 watts out from the cable up there. If you're using the USB-A, you can get 22.5. Just like with most Anchor devices, once you start utilizing more than one, the power is going to be split between the devices you have plugged in. It's a safety measure. And if you do that, the total output wattage will be dropped down to about 24. If you're looking for the maximum input wattage that you can expect for this, you are looking at 30 watts max. It's not going to be a super fast charging device, as you might imagine from the timetable I gave you for the battery charging, but I like to test things out, not just rely on what the specs from the manufacturer say. So let's take a look at some testing I did for the battery, for output, temperature, and the like. Try this on my smartphone. All right, nine volts, about 11 watts. Now we're gonna change this using cable. That's not built in. See if we get better, about the same, maybe a little less. And one last try here using USB-A to USB-C. And output's about 6.8. All right, testing, we're going to use the inline power cord here. 
and see after about an hour what the temperature actually after probably 30 minutes we'll let this fast charge we're at 50 percent right now might be a little tricky to see it says we have an hour and six minutes this is in fact rapidly charging and I will double check and see what the heat of the battery is like. The battery on the phone got from about 8% to 53. The anchor battery itself is completely dead and got to about 83, which is not terrible at all. Uh, but now we can see if we rapidly charge this, what the battery temperature will be like to see if it's higher than when it's discharging. After a little over 30 minutes, Still have 51 minutes till it's fully charged. It's 40%. If we take a reading, it's about 96, 97. Oop, I got 100 up there at the top. 106 seems to be the highest. Coming back, this is fully charged now. About 80, so not terrible. One thing that Anchor has been moving towards with especially their nano series of devices is a greener approach to the manufacturing of their devices. In particular, power bank here is made from 80% post-consumer recycled plastic to reduce carbon emissions. Yes, that is not 100% recycled, but 80% is not bad. For those of you who are looking for a more eco-friendly device, the Anchor Nano Series could be exactly what you're looking for. There is a lot to love about this particular power bank, just from its portability and usability and never having to worry about bringing a cable with you ever again. But that doesn't mean that there are a few cons or limitations or things that you should be aware of. First off for me, the one con that I want you to be aware of is this screen. I'm inside right now using my studio lights. You can see if I move it around a little bit, it's not terrible. You can see the screen. However, if you're outside in direct sunlight, this screen is pretty much useless. As you can see, even with me moving around and trying to adjust my shadow, you can barely barely see this screen here. And I get it, it's underneath a plastic protective coating, so there's a lot that it has to penetrate, but if you're gonna have a screen on a battery bank like this, I wanna be able to see it in direct sunlight. If you look in the corner over there for my review of the larger Big Brother fast charging power bank that I have from Anchor, that screen, no problems whatsoever actually looking at it outside. So something to be considered. Also, we have the cord length. I wish this was just a little longer because if you saw in my testing, most of the time I was testing it like this upside down because I just didn't have enough cord length to get this perpendicular the way I would like it. Yes, I understand the cord length is so you don't have a large amount hanging off here, but if you're charging this by plugging it into a wall, there's not enough cord to have this hang down to the floor in most places. So you'll be putting a lot of extra pressure on the cable. Yes, I understand it was a design choice, but just, just a little more would have been nice. One issue that I did run into with the power bank and with the nano series of anchor devices because I've been testing quite a few of them lately because I really like anchor devices is with my pixel 8 phone in that when trying to charge via the cable here I cannot rapid charge my pixel 8 it drops in and out it can't hold that rapid charge on my pixel 5 it works perfectly fine however when I use the USB-C port here with the pixel Eight, that will maintain the rapid charge from this battery bank. Also using the USB-A, I have no problems. I'm not sure if it's an issue with the Pixel 8 that needs to be updated via software, but I have run into it with a lot of my Anchor Nano devices. And I've been testing three other ones in succession to this battery bank right now, and they all have this issue. Just a data point for you, if you don't have a Pixel 8, another style phone, this might not be an issue for you. We are gonna test the rapid charge capability here. See if it has the issue that other nano devices had, which is that it would drop. So it's dropping right from here. So nano with the Pixel 8 seems to have an issue. Now this is not the only one that I've tested this with, but we're gonna try USB-C to USB-C. All right, here, see if it does the same thing. It says rapid charging, but I'm watching this kind of bounce around no so the inline cable seems to give the issue but using usb-c does not which is good we're also going to test the usb-a to usb-c make sure that it doesn't give us any issues it says we're charging and no problems now this does seem to be a issue only with the pixel 8 phone 
at least at time of filming. If I bring over my older Pixel 5, which can do rapid charging as well, we can see it's holding the rapid charge. Give that a second for the screen to adjust. It's holding the rapid charge and it is not bouncing around over here. So this does seem to be something software based between the Anchor device and a Google Pixel 8 phone. Not all Google phones, and if you don't have a Google phone, this is not something that you're going to have to concern yourself with, but it is a data point for you, and sorry for all the cables, I have been testing this, as well as the Nano charging station for about the last two hours to see if it's cables or phone or whatever. So, data point for you. For the power on the go, you cannot beat Anchor. They were able to solve a common issue most have with keeping their devices charged throughout the day, but removed the unforeseen problem of cable management to use a power bank. If you're looking for a compact, good output watt portable power bank and don't have a Google Pixel 8 at the moment, I would strongly recommend the Anchor Nano 30 watt power bank. If this sounds like what you've been looking for, in a power bank, I will have a link where you can pick one up for yourself. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making a comprehensive video like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Not sure if this is the right portable power bank for you? On screen now, you'll see two other options that I have reviewed to help you make a more informed decision for yourself.